Okay, so I'm going to go into um, Xcode. That's weird. I thought I had it open. Now, once this uh, once this comes up, we're going to uh, create a new Xcode project. Now, you also need to go into Blackboard. Hopefully, you'll be able to get into it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into Blackboard also. I tried to print this morning and the printer isn't working. Otherwise, you'd have paper copies of this uh, tutorial. If you go to Finder, um, it should be under the apps. If I, and sometimes I just can't find things, so if you, if you go to the applications in the finder, you can always, it seems like I always find it. Uh, let's see. This is part of the curriculum that's provided uh, by uh, the Apple Corporation. Uh, they wanted to, everybody to be able to... Um, develop apps for their their phone okay so um everybody at that point no okay Under course content. They've provided a complete curriculum um, for the Xcode and Swift programming language and all that. <clears throat> Anybody have any difficulties bringing everything up, finding anything? No, just slow. Just slow? Okay. Yeah, You're good. Um, plugged in my laptop today. No, um, no power outages. <laughs> that wasn't very fun that one time. <laughs> now, if you put them side by side here, you might find it easier uh, to follow the tutorial. Everybody to that point? Maybe not to that point. So not there. The next semester, next time you have this class, you should make it so that um, one of the fees is the ninety nine dollars for the semester. Yeah, and that'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, she uh, figured out that error that popped up. You have to create a um, an account. But you have one. I have one. Yeah. Um, but I didn't never paid for one. Um, you don't actually. Don't. No, but you don't need a you don't need a paid one. So if you do get that error popping up, uh, what did it say last time? Um, I can't remember what error you guys were getting. But if you create a, an account, then you won't get that anymore. Yeah, so. but in order to create a developer account, it's not in your account. Well, you don't have to have a de developer account, though. That's what it was saying. that you needed a developer account for Access to run it. See, I just have a regular account. I never paid for it. Yeah, you don't have a developer, right? Yeah, I regular. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to create a new Xcode project. Well, actually, um, in the tutorial, let me follow on with instead of jumping ahead. Uh, it talks about um, uh, get the tools, here's what you need to do, and so forth. And then there's a link, build a basic uh, user interface down at the bottom, UI. And this talks about getting familiar with Xcode, learning objectives, and then um, this, uh, their tutorial is actually excellent. It pretty well follows along. A little bit different, but not much. Um, so as soon as your Xcode, bless you, as Xcode launches, the welcome window appears. So you see this. Uh, they tell you to create a new Xcode project. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click this, create a new Xcode project. When, now, when this pops up, and tell me if I'm going too fast as we go through this. Um, as this pops up, it comes up and asks you the template you want to use. So these are um, templates that they've created where they have a lot of the code or coding already built in. Now, a template in programming means that they've already programmed in um, the augmented reality portion. So you don't have to write all that code again. Again, that's the main idea behind programming is to reuse code. Um, if you had to write everything from scratch in a program, it would take you years and years to write an app because um, you just have to write everything from scratch at the lowest level. Okay, so we got single view app is what they want. So we'll click next. Now it says in dialog appears, you use following values, name your app, and choose additional uh, options for your pro uh, project. Uh, under the product name, it tells us to put food tracker. <clears throat> and um, got uh, David Hayes, uh, Callie here is what mine is. Um, organization name David Hayes. <laughs> Does your, what does your say? Cali student. Cali student? Okay. So I guess that's the defaults to whatever you're signed in as, which is fine. We, if you want to change it to something else, you can. Um, tells you over here, um, Xcode user product name, you enter to name your project in the app. So that's where that, that goes to. So you can't, you shouldn't name it just like ABC. It should be a meaningful name. Um, team, oh, we're not working on teams here uh, yet. Uh, organization name, name of your organization or your own name, you can leave this blank. Um, organization identifier, uh, if you have one, um, if you don't, use com.example. Um, so let's put in com.example. Just to follow the tutorials closely as we can. Language is Swift. Now, if I do the, the drop down, there's Objective C also. Swift is their newest push. Um, Objective C is used to, used to be the language they use for you know for everything in terms of this this realm. Um, core data is unselected. Include uh, unit tests is selected and says include UI tests unselected. Um, so we're going to unselect include. Uh, the user interface test. And they give you a picture of a screen, what it should look like. Then we're going to click Next. Now in dialog that appears, 
select a location to save your project and then click create um, now here I'm gonna put mine on my desktop so I click desktop there I'll say new folder and I'll call it food tracker this can be whatever name you want to give it um, now this is going to store it on your your desktop um, so when we're done uh, you want to zip or zip it up you want to copy it uh, to your flash drive and um, I, I brought out two of those so we can take turns to um, co copy off your files so next time you have them to work with usually it's not a good idea to um, have your project directly on your flash drive while you're developing it's just it puts a layer, another layer of slowness you don't need what happens if you bump it a little bit also like if you bump the flash drive and it comes out a little bit oh, okay. might corrupt your data yeah so it's never a good idea to write to it directly um, okay so I'm gonna click create now you should see wherever you decide to store it at in my case I chose desktop you should see a new folder and then we can just click the uh, create here and um, they, they talk about this error but I still to, to this point I've never seen this error um, workspace window may have an error icon with a message that says signing for food track um, Pretty small, but I, I don't see that. Do you see it? It says yeah. signing for food tracker requires a development team. It's like the development team is project coordinator. Yeah, you don't need one. It says you do not need a development team to run the application in the same way. Right. But do you actually see it on your screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. Where do you see it at? It's a I mean, it's on status. Hmm. Your status. It, it goes identity and then it goes signing and it says at the bottom of signing next to Oh, right there in front of me. <laughs> I wish this was bigger. <laughs> it, if you make it bigger, though, you can't see everything else on the screen. That's the problem. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Get familiar with the Xcode window. So let's talk about that a little bit. Over here, um, you got uh, uh, these different um, things you can click on. If you click on this, this app, uh, Delegate Swift, what does that look like? That well, looks like the XML, but this is code. So this is programming. So this is, uh, this is one of the areas where you can put uh, different uh, lines of code. Remember how we talked about in the previous class about the, the different uh, variable types? The integers, doubles, and so forth. Well, same principle is going to hold, <coughs> hold, hold here. Now, um, what's this? What kind of data type is that? The what? That's a Boolean, yeah. Remember, Boolean is true or false. So when this gets done running this, and we'll talk more about what in the world this is later on, when this gets done running, it returns true. So it says, okay, we're done. Uh, here's true. Now we'll see how you can compare that, but that's, uh, that's just code. Now here it says import UI kit. Import is where you bring in other code that somebody's already written, so you don't have to write all that. So again, that, that's the benefit of this, is all this is done for you. You put your own little pieces of code in there, and then you're up and running. Now the view controller, if I click it, you see it's just lines of code also. Um, override, super dot, um, we're going to talk about all of this. Um, I forgot to mention it in the last class, but um, you see the slash slash here? Those are comments. <clears> that means you can put anything up here you want. So um, I could come up here and I could type um, 
This is my first iOS app. Um, comments are ignored by your program. They're merely for you to, um, two years from now, when you bring up the program again, you can, um, you can see what in the world is you were doing. Um, main storyboard, if I click that, it looks like this. This is your screen design. So that's your screen design. Um, assets, uh, launch screen storyboard, uh, info P list. Um, so you just click it and it goes through all those different. Well, here's some more code. Remember how our other, other Android Studio, there's like a ton of XML places and so forth. Um, same type of uh, idea here. It's kind of spread out all over. You need to know where to put, put what. And products here. Um, we haven't done anything there. Okay. So that's what they're telling us in that um, first part here is they just want you to get used to where things at. You got um, your toolbar across the top. You got your um, site over here where you click the different files. And then they appear here. And this, this window over here is our utility area. It tells you navigator area, editor area, and uh, utility area. Editor is where you're going to make all your edits, changes. Uh, this is your navigation where all of your project files are. So you just click individual project files. Now here will be like properties you'll set, um, all kinds of different areas. That's why they call it the utility area. It's, anything can be there. Okay, and it says run the iOS simulator. It's you based your project next code template, the basic uh, app development model is set for you. Even though you haven't run any code, you can build and run a single view. To build and run, uh, um, let's include, um, use the iOS simulator app that's included, and um, they show you where it's at. So you got a picture here, you got a food tracker, and right to the side of it where it says iPhone 7. Uh, ours is a little bit out of date. Remember how I told you this isn't exactly so what do we have there? Yeah. So the what? The iPhone X. Um, so um, you can come down here. You can pick whichever one you want. If you scroll up, I don't know how far back it goes. Fifth generation. Okay. Um, that's one of my uh, one of my goals. I haven't actually got it yet, yet but I want to get on eBay and order some. See if I can find some cheap, you know, iPhones that are from way back when. <laughs> oh dear. Um, uh, and then when it gets to that point, we could plug it in, and you can actually, you know, see it live on your Apple device. Um, let's see, what do they tell us to choose? It tells us to choose iPhone 7, so even though there's newer ones there, I'll choose iPhone 7. Okay, and then um, it tells you to click the Run button over here. And so if I click the Run button, you notice across the top here it gives you the building status, and it's so fast that you couldn't see it. Um, but then... It'll come up with this. This will take a little bit to come up. It's not going to be in a very exciting app. It's just everything's blank. There you go. There's your app you just created. Be ready to upload it and sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, not everything. Uh, a lot of it is compatible, mm -hmm. such that you can simulate that, but some of the items you can't. I've tried to create videos of different apps, you know, try to download and install it and run it, and it just wouldn't work. That's yeah. Um, if you haven't used... The what? You can text Kate and tell yeah. Can you text from it? Yeah. Really? So I didn't try that. Well, you can text Kate back and forth. 
Appleseed is responding to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, if you haven't used a Mac before, I should mention this. You notice in the upper left-hand corner it says Simulator? Because um, that's, that's where we're running now. And the menu changes to whatever you're working on. So uh, if I click back over here at Xcode, you see how it now changes to Xcode across the top. So you can even turn off the front. Yeah. I, I'd probably just leave it running. <laughs> you can take screenshots of that. I sw- I to a Samsung. I forgot my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with that emulator. By the way, um, if we were if we were able to bring up the Android Studio earlier today, you would have saw that it had a simulator also. That's why I was trying to find one of those that didn't error out, like on yours where you got it to run, uh, where you got it, no errors. You could have ran that, and you would have saw the sim simulator come up. So, same principle. Um, now, you don't want to actually um, close that because we're going to need that. So, go ahead and move it down here to the corner. We'll um, scoot it back up here in a little bit. Um says, if you're running an app for the first time, Xcode asks whether you want to enable developer mode on your Mac. Developer mode allows Xcode access to certain debugging features without requiring you to enter your password each time, so you'd like to enable that. Um, I don't think you're getting that error message today. Nobody said that. That's weird. Because I, I know you, you're signed in to your account, right? No, I signed out of it. You had to sign in. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Um, okay, so uh, it talks about watching the build process. It shows this is what your app should look like. I think citing. Um, now, the next part tells us to review the source code. It says a single view app comes with a few source code files, except the app environment, um, although we already looked at it. It says um, make sure the project navigator is open in the navigator area, and then um, let's see, blah blah blah. They tell you how to turn it on if you shut it off. You go to View Navigator, Show Project Navigator. Um, over here, there's this. Um, let me click on it. Put my mouse over it, it says show the project navigator. So that's another way you can get that to pop up. Is your project navigator not there? I'm sure it is, but the arrow on the diagram is in between the two options. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. Then we want to select the app, uh, app delegate.swift. And we've already looked at that, but we'll uh, open it again. Uh, so follow the tutorial. Um, this defines your app delegate class. Um, a class is a, like an object. Um, have you ever played the Legos Star Wars game? Yes. Yeah, so have you played that? There must be like a, about 80, 80 characters in the game. Right. Now you could go through and you could define 80 characters. That'd take you forever. So what they do instead is you, you um, group together certain characters that look very similar. You know, like uh, maybe, um, maybe uh, Luke looks exactly like Han Solo. Maybe they got something slightly different. But majority of them are the same. So you group those together, you define it one time. Uh, this character has one head, two arms, two legs, and so forth. And then you create, that's called a class. And then you create an instance of that. So you have a Luke instance and you have a Han Solo instance. So that's the idea of a class, is you create one definition over here and you can then use it a hundred times where it, it brings all that in. 
So when they uh, refer to, um, it defines your app delegate class, that's what a class is. Okay, the app delegate uh, creates a window where your app content is drawn and provides a place to uh, respond to uh, state transitions within the app. Creates the entry point um, to your app and a run loop that delivers input events to your app. So over here, if I move that over, that's what these different items will do. Like, what do you think this will do? Right. When you quit the application, it'll run this code. Why is that important? From a programming standpoint, do you want to save anything off? Well, if you want to save anything off, when they exit out, that's when you save it. Now, probably up here at the beginning, um, override point for customization after the application launch. Somebody runs your apps. Do you want to do something to begin with? Um, maybe you want to pull information about the, about the user so you can uh, kind of populate it. Like what did the Xcode do when we went into it and we created a new project? It knew who we were, right? Where did it get that from? We didn't tell it. It got it from the main operating system. So it got it from the, the Mac operating system. Uh, so that's, that's what this would be for. And you don't have to sit there and wonder. They tell you, like this one is sent when the application is about to move from active to inactive state. Uh, this can occur for certain types of temporary interruptions, such as incoming phone call or S, uh, SMS message, or when the user quits the application and begins to transition to the background state. Um, how are you going to handle it when a, a phone calls? There was somebody I was talking with the other day, and uh, they said, uh, let, me, let me call you back because I can't do my phone and uh, the app at the same time. Um, and that's a problem, isn't it? Necessarily keeping that uh, both going with some apps. Is there some apps that allow you to, to do both at the same time? Yes. Yeah. So they, they coded it that way, didn't they? So you, you're in kind of control. You know, when they give you this, then you decide how you want it to work. I forget what app that was he was on that he couldn't do that and talk at the same time. Um, maybe he just didn't know how to. <laughs> I don't have. I don't actually have an iPhone. Um, I just got Android. Um, maybe got an Android. How do you do it with an Android? Good. If you're if you get a call and you want to go to an app. Um, depending. If I'm in Wi-Fi or not, then possibly. Yeah. If I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I can do it, but if I'm not, anything that requires data. Right. Is that an Android? Yeah. Um, there's a, and I'm trying to remember how to do it. There's a way you can bring up the apps in a list, so you can switch back and forth. But again, not every app allows it or is designed that way. Yeah, see, I thought, I thought for a while, because I used to have Sprint, so I thought it was just a Sprint thing saying, no, you can't use phone and, or cellular and dead at the same time, but I can't do it on this phone either. Right. And then I thought it was just Apple, because, you know, Apple uses stuff like that sometimes. And, and it can't do it on this one either. So, so you can't use an app that requires data and have a call at the same time. Yeah, unless you're connected to Wi-Fi. Really? I, that's never happened. Well, it probably depends upon how the app's designed. Like, if you have an app... Like, I can play a game. I can play a game. Yeah. And be on the phone. I, I can play. text while I'm on the phone. Yeah. And yeah. watch YouTube and have a phone call. And be on data. Can you do it on the phone? See, in some cases, if they got... Like, YouTube's designed to I do that. YouTube Really? You can't do that? No. It, as soon as I as soon as I switch to another app, YouTube stops playing. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's yeah, a problem. That's a problem with your phone in that you case. YouTube bread, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Oh. 
On this phone, I don't have my YouTube. Put it on YouTube right now. Okay. And you have an Apple, so you can't like. At least I can split screen my phone. How much am I supposed to be burning on? There. Find it. No, it was YouTube Premium. Like YouTube. I can play Pokemon Go and have my two Jets and you get it. Okay. <laughs> So you can have both of those going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it's it's all how they design it. And, like, I can't play YouTube if I split screen. I can do it. Oh, you like, can? I can't close the YouTube app and have YouTube still be playing. Oh, yeah. Unless you use YouTube hmm. Now, um, anyway, that's what they're wanting us to do is just look at that. Um, let's see, entry point, the run loop. Um, uh, probably the important part to remember there is the app delegate is where you want to go look to where you put your code for those different, uh, different points. Um, the application object, uh, system creates an application object. The application object is responsible for managing the life cycle of the app. The system also creates uh, an instance of your app delegate class and assigns it to the, to the application object. Finally, the system launches your app. So this is kind of the main um, meat of where you'll put a lot of a lot of your code. Um, see, it's automatically created um, unless you're doing something highly unusual. You should use this class to initialize your app, respond to app level events. What's an app level event? When you click something. So when you press a button, when you slide, you know, so forth. That's an event that's occurring. So that's what they're talking about. Um, uh, actually, it's uh, Zoom, I think. That was terrifying. I never have used Zoom on uh, Mac, though. There's a one person uh, that um, uh, is at another site, so he might have signed on. Um, okay. Yeah, now we're here as participants. Erica. Okay, so. Um, where is that? There you go. Now, um, so for this here. Uh, it talks about a reference to the uh, app windows. I'm going to create a new project. Um, protocol defines a number of methods you use to set up your app. Um, the app delegate class contains a single property called window. You remember the um, where we were using this the other day, or at least you were watching me do it, you couldn't do it, where I did a var? That's where you're declaring something to use. We were declaring like a variable we were using, but um, here we're declaring a window and we're saying it's a user interface window. Um, now it says uh, app, the app delegate contains stub implementations. Stub means there's no code there. Um, all they did was create a function. Uh, I got a function I, uh, perf <laughs> well, I need to watch what I say. <laughs> Things come out of my mouth are just inappropriate. Um, I have a routine that I do in the morning. Um, I get up out of bed. Um, I go in the bathroom, do my business. I brush my teeth. Then I shave. Then I get in the shower. Um, there's some other things along the way. Um, like I'll go use the restroom first. Go get my clothes before I go in the bathroom, uh, head to the bathroom, brush my teeth, shave, so forth. Each morning, I'm like a robot. I call that routine. That's what a function is. You see here, this starts with F-U-N-C. That's something that's called. So um, now you, you're not necessarily calling this, the, your your app is. So the the, the Skeleton, the templates design, when they exit out of your app, when they close it down, it'll automatically call that function down there. 
Does that make sense on what those are? Okay. And stub means there's no code here. They just got the definition. Now notice that this function starts with a beginning curly brace and then it has a closing curly brace. Um, whenever you have a function defined, you have to have a beginning and closing. Now we're going to see later on in the course how to create our own functions. Like maybe you got your own code that you want to put in that you call. And we'll see how to do that. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Step methods also provides comments. Uh, comments. Uh, list the lesson you won't be using it so you don't make any changes to that. Now we got the view controller source file. So if we look at that, so here's a view controller. This tells you a uh, single view application bless you, has another source code file. Uh, select it to view it. This uh, file defines a custom subclass. Okay. So we got a, um, a view controller here. And then we got a um, our user interface view controller. Um, is every character on that um, uh, Star Wars Lego game the same? No. Uh, doesn't R2-D2 fly across the air? Oh, yeah, he does. He flies, yeah, right? A angry. Right. Um, but uh, do they share some characteristics? Like when he's not flying, doesn't he move across the screen like the rest of the characters? Yeah. He does, doesn't he? So you got a class here, and then you got things defined about their basic movements. And then over here you have another subclass that inherits all that, but then adds additional stuff like flying through the air. So that, that's what they're talking about with the subclass. This right here, um, our user um, interface view controller, uh, this is, has all the main definitions. And this is saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I want to bring in all the different parts of that, but in addition, I want to define some new items. Override. What this does is it overrides the default program for user interface view controller and then does this. Same down here. But notice this is really a place where you can put your own code. They don't show you all the code for the, this user, user interface view controller, do they? They don't want you changing it. Um, they just put little safe places here where you can put in your own, own segments. Okay. More than you probably want to know about subclasses. Uh, let's see, overrides both this. Um, didn't do anything yet, um, except call it. Um, template comes with a did receive memory warning. Um, you don't need to implement it in these lessons, um, so go ahead and delete it. Um, now notice. It's got class, view controller, and then we got our beginning curly bracket, closing curly bracket. You have to make sure you delete it in the correct place. Notice here's my beginning and here's my closing. So to delete that code, I want to highlight just that code there. And then press your delete. What do you think would happen if you deleted this last one also? It'd mess everything up. Because the class up here, view controller, has a beginning curly bracket. And for it to have a beginning curly bracket, it has to have a corresponding closing curly bracket. Did we get that deleted OK? By the way, that's the most uh, uh, hideous thing to happen in uh, uh, programming, is to delete one of those curly brackets. It doesn't necessarily give you where the problem is, and you're sitting there forever. It'll give you like maybe a hundred errors, and you're sitting there. Why? Why is what's wrong with all this? I, I didn't change all this, and and it all has to do with not having a closing one at the end. It messes up uh, the code. Okay. Um, now we're down to open your story storyboard. Uh, so um, blah blah blah. It's a visual representation of the app's user interface. Um, so in the Project Navigator, we're going to select Main Storyboard. So 
I click this here and it comes up with our our view of our window um, and then it says um, the background of the storyboard is a canvas you can use canvas to add and arrange user interface elements at this point the storyboard in your app contains one scene uh, which represents a screen of content in your app, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, when your app, okay, you saw this, okay, all real exciting. Down to the build basic uh, user interface. Um, and this is true in about any programming language. What you'll see here is the elements you see is uh, kind of shared across the board in terms of programming. Um, I'm skipping down um, specifically to add a text field to your scene. It says choose editor canvas. Make sure that the ba show bounds rectangle is selected. If we have Xcode selected, the editor is talking about is the editor menu up here. And then you choose um, canvas. And um, show bounds rectangle. What do they want that selected? I think it was selected. Mine's already selected. If yours isn't selected, which I doubt it is, uh, then go ahead and, and choose that and you should see it selected. Everybody find that? Um, if you have X, make sure you're on Xcode, not the, um, the Safari. Mm -hmm. And go up to Editor and choose Canvas and uh, then you'll see that this one here. Where's the editor Yeah. You don't see editor? No. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Right up there. I, um, okay, editor and then what? Um, uh, it was a canvas and... Um, that you show bound rectangles. Okay, now I don't have to. I have. Uh, um, oh. oh, you don't have your. Um, uh, oh, no. Put the uh, show the storyboard. Um, what is that? Yeah. Um, what it does is, depending upon what you have selected, it automatically changes the, men the menu up there. <laughs> okay. Now this down here, says open the object library and so I'm going to have to scoot this over a little bit that's down here and uh, probably it's already open um, but down here uh, if it isn't then you click the little uh, blue I don't know what that is it's a it's blue a is it a blue circle is it a home okay. yeah. so that causes this to appear and um, after that, then, okay, so object library appears, um, and it tells you, if you don't see the object library, click its button, which is the third button in that. Alternatively, choose view, utilities, show object library. So they provide that. A list appears showing each um, blah, blah, blah in the object library. Type text field. If I scroll down, you'll eventually see a text field. Now it tells you a little bit about it. It says displays edible text and sends an action, action message to a target object when return is tapped. So this is the one they're referring to. Everybody find uh, the text? 
If you click it one time, it'll pop up and give you a little bit more information where you can read that. Okay, so um says um, after you get down to that point, it says drag a text field object from the object resource to your scene. What that's referring to is we're going to take this text field here, we're going to drag it and drop it over here. So now over here in your main storyboard, you should see uh, the text uh, that you just dropped on there. This is the this is the basics of user interface. You have to decide what do you want the person to input in, and then you drop in appropriate text fields, labels, whatever. Um, it says if necessary, zoom in by choosing editor, canvas, zoom. Um, well, I can see mine just fine. Drag the text field so it's positioned in the top half of the scene and aligned with the left margin in the scene. Uh, stop dragging the text field when it snaps to the left margin. A lot of editors are designed, by the way, this is called the IDE, uh, Integrated Development Environment. Um, have you ever heard that term before? ID. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> but an IDE is what, what gives you all this fun stuff where you can design screens easily, where you can debug, little red squiggly appears under your, your errors, that's part of an ID, the interactive development environment. Now, if I put my mouse over this text field, it becomes a hand, and I can start moving it. As I move it closer, you see how it becomes a, a dotted line going across there? That's what they're talking about. You want that lined up with that dotted line. And it kind of snaps to that, though I'm not obviously not doing it well there. And then you let go. So that's the alignment they're referring to. Okay, so it says the blue layout guide helps uh, helps you place a text field. Layout guides are visible only when you drag or resize objects next to them. They disappear when you let go of the text field. Now, if I come back here to Xcode. If I click the, um, the text field here, you notice over here under um, this, this window, it says round style uh, Stop them. <laughs> text field. Let's see. Different person. Well, there's two other people online on this, but okay. Now, um, we got our text field here. It says round style text field. Does that look round? No. No, that doesn't look like a rounded to me, but my eyes aren't very good. Um, if you click the safe area right here, you see it chooses something else. If you choose view, choose something else. Now you notice how view uh, has safe area and round style text field underneath it. So those are both included in that view. I could click view controller and then it selects all that. So each individual one you select um, gets changed. That's going to become uh, important later on. Because uh, remember, whatever we have chose is what things are based upon. Okay, so let me go back to the tutorial here. Um, text field to res. Necessary, click text field to resize it. Uh, you can resize it by dragging its resize handles. You notice here, when I have the, the, the text field selected, it's got the little square boxes on the end. If we put your mouse over that, it becomes a double arrow. And you can uh, then click and hold down and move those over. 
you can make it bigger. You can move it off the phone. Yeah, the, the thing about it is, is, from a design standpoint, it allows you to do a lot of things maybe you shouldn't do. Um, but, okay. Everybody able to resize okay? Um, let's see. Do you see um, resize left and right edges of the text field until you see the uh, three vertical? Okay, so I'm going to come over here, choose that, and I move it over to the side. When I move it to the far right, and it uh, is about, uh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch from the right side, you see all three of those uh, vertical dotted lines appear. That's what they're talking about. And then you let go. Okay. Uh, although you have a text field in your area, there's no instruction to the user about what to enter in uh, the field. Uh, use a text field's placeholder text to prompt the user to, to enter the name of a new meal. It says to configure the text field's placeholder text. With the text field selected, open the attributes uh, inspector in the utility area. Um, remember our util utility area was this over here. And um, my eyes aren't very good. I think that's it there, isn't it? Looks like a um, a flag. Yeah, it's the, it's the fourth one. Right. Is that a flag or what is that? Arrow, okay. That. And this is, uh, this is uh, based upon whatever you have selected. I have my text field selected, so everything here is based upon that text field. And you see there's a lot of different things you can do. You can set the color, and um, you can set the background image. So if you want it to be an image on the background of that, then you can. Now when I say on that, I'm talking just the text field. Um, you can change the font size. Now, my font size is currently 17. Um, but a lot of different things you can do. Is there a way to manually change the, um, the width and height by just like entering the numbers instead of having to use the search or the Um, It's down here somewhere, I believe. That's what I thought. Is it just the 13? Um. I'm trying to remember. It looks like. I think it is. If I put that three for the. No. Oh, X, X and Y. There is a way. I don't think I remember though. Oh, that's stretching. Where is it? I don't know. I have to find out the answer to that. Usually this, I, I always just moved it, but I most of them have a way to do it. Oh, um, do you see it? It's the next icon, the ruler. There's three forty three right there. Oh, okay. That's where that's where you can uh, hard code it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so for this particular one, um, they want us to uh, click the fourth button over. We did that. What do they want us to change? Placeholder field and the attributes inspector. Find the, the field label placeholder and type uh, meal name. So in the placeholder here, we're going to type meal name. Type 
and turn it on again. So then you have to get going. Put it in. Uh, I didn't read it. Um, run it past me again? See, it says to uh, put enter now and then into the... Uh, oh! Because it's... Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because you're prompting the person to enter. To enter. <laughs> I read that wrong. Yeah, should be enter meal name. Not that matters. You can type whatever you want there. Yeah. Now you see here what it was changed? Yeah, there's a little uh, default there that kind of guides you on what to do. Now, um, let's see. Press return to your meal name. Did that. Okay. When you're um, editing the text fields attribute, you can uh, also add that. Edit the attributes of the system's keyboard displayed when a user uh, selects a text field. Just like an app, right? You click within it and the little keyboard pops up. So it says to configure the text field's keyboard, you make sure the text field is still selected. If that's not selected, you'll get different options. Like if you have uh, this selected, see how it changes the options? If I have safe area selected, it doesn't appear like there is any options for the safe area. Um, if I had the view selected, see these are specific to the view. So the properties over here will always be specific to whatever you have selected. Okay. So, um, okay. So make sure the attribute, the text field selected, and the attributes find the field labeled return key. <clears throat> hmm. Here's return key. And um, what's it tell us? I try to have this printed off on paper for you for next time. It makes it easier. You, you can see more of the screen. I can make it bigger. Um, and select done. So the return key. Then we choose done. Uh, an attributes inspector. Select the auto enable return key uh, checkbox. Again, scroll down if necessary. Um, so auto enable return key, auto enable. Sorry, ah, boy, my eyes are, I'm going to the eye doctor on Friday morning. Oh, by the way, I won't be here early on Friday morning. <laughs> so I'm going to the eye doctor. The what? No, it's only if you want to use the, the, you know, if you don't got a MacBook at home, that's your chance to come in and. and you mean we can't take him home with us? No, nah, can't take him home with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, lab fee's my bonus. No. <laughs> Is there a lab fee? Do they charge you a lab fee? No. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, label return key. Okay. In the attributes inspector, find label return key. Select done. This change will make the default return key on the keyboard more pronounced to the user by changing it to a done key. Um, so it just changes uh, changes the view, what it looks like. Still perform the same function. Uh, this one, what it does, this change makes it impossible for the user to tap the done key before typing text in the text field. Ensuring the user can never enter an empty string as a meal name. I always find those annoying, you know, where you have to actually type something before you can say I'm done. But but again, that's that's from a design standpoint, you decide what you want to do. And they give you a picture here, you know, of what it look, should look like. Okay, next we're going to add a label. And then we'll we're going to talk about what, what in the world is a label. So if I come over here, uh, it says an object library, type label in the uh, filter field to find the label uh, object quickly. We're right down here, so I want to show this. Here we got a label. A label is just text you put on your app that just displays. 
like something you want them to read. They don't interact with it. They don't, uh, they don't necessarily input anything. They're just reading it. A button. Well, that's kind of obvious. It's just something you push, right? Um, segmented control displays multiple segments, each which functions a discrete button. Uh, we'll see that. That'll make more sense once we show it. Slider. Have you ever used slider before? Probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You slide things on an app, right? That's a one of the main main tools you can use. Switch. You've seen that quite a bit, right? Yeah. Switches turns on and off. What uh, what variable type goes well with a switch? Do you think? Sure. Boolean. True or false? Um. Because that's what a switch is, right? It's either true or false. How about a slider? Like if you're changing the, uh, maybe the, how much it's, um, you want to darken or lighten the, your screen. You can choose that slider. Is that Boolean? No, that's not true or false. Now shutting your screen off might be, right? If you want to shut it off or something, that might be. Okay. Lots of different ones here. We're going to go all over these uh, over time. But they want us to do label, so here's label. And if you click it again, it tells you tells you about it. You can drag and drop it onto this. Now notice you got your label here, and um, when I click it, it has six, eight little boxes. Those are again resize, so you can resize those. You can move this wherever you want. If you put your mouse over, it becomes a hand. You can drag it. I probably have my uh, text box too far up, so I can move it down. I'm guessing they're going to want the label right above it, like right there. But let me go read. Okay. Uh, let's see. Object value time by label, drag the label from the scene, drag the label so it's right above the text field and line with left margin. Stop dragging the label when it snaps to the guidelines. Okay, so I'm dragging this, dragging this around. And again, when you snap it against that far left dotted uh, vertical line, you can lit up on it. It says double click the label and type meal name. So if I double click the label, and I'll type meal name and then press enter. Now over here um, in our, if you should already have the attributes showing, but over here in our properties or attributes, look at the, where it says text and it says plain. What does it say right below it? Um, meal name. Um, you could come over here and type it. David's um, uh, House of Pancakes. David's Hop. D Hop. So come up with a new restaurant. I'm going to rip off IHOP. So now I press enter on that, and look what happens. It changes it over here. The reason why they're telling you to double click that is that's a very quick way to actually change your text. You can't change every attribute, every property by doing that, but sometimes you can double click it and, and change it. Everybody get their um, label changed to a different name? Um, it says now add a button to the scene. And um, I already talked about the button, so let me come over here. You should probably see it right over here. Now, by the way, you can resize these. Like attributes are taking up a lot of screen space, isn't it? So you can put your mouse over this, and you can um, you can bring that up like that, so you can see more of it. And uh, we got button, so I'm going to click and drag and drop that over here. I may have took that too far up. Okay. Then it probably wants us to drag it to the far left. Um, drag the button to the, so it's right below the text field, aligned with left margin. Stop dragging the button when it snaps. Okay. So I'm going to take this, drag it over to the, the far left. 
and I'll stop when it uh, snaps against, against that. This helps ensure those guidelines help ensure that you line things up and it looks good. So that's one of his main features. Okay, so then it says double click the button and you can probably figure out what double clicking does, right? Yeah, change what it says. So if I double click it, it wants us to change it to set default label text. Okay, so set default label text. Now it says reposition the button if necessary. When I made it that big, notice how it automatically resized my button, didn't it? So I want to click and drag this back. So it looks like that. Okay. Um, you don't understand how the elements you've added are actually arranged in the scene. Look at the outline view to see which uh, user interface elements have been added to your scene. To view the outline view in your storyboard, find the outline view toggle. So over here in our, our storyboard, um, I'm not sure if I see it. You see it? Are you open? Outline view toggle. Oh, that's the uh, little tiny box at the bottom. See oh, there. The little square. I was looking for it up uh, up above here. Oh yeah. Oh, it says it's high. If you go over twice to the right, it's a little square with the directional. Up, go up a little bit. That right there. All right there. No, that's hide document outline. Well, if you close it and then you uh, if you close it and look at it. Oh, I don't have a storyboard. Okay. So you closed yours and well if it's closed then it'll say outline view Oh there it is. Yeah, that's what it's just showing you. Oh like that? Oh okay. I don't have that. You don't have that? I may have to make my um. <laughs> I may have to make my text bigger. I can't see some of this stuff. I'll have it. Like I say, I'll find some way to get this printed. I don't know why the printer's not working in here. Yeah, and that's the idea. Is you when you develop a new app, you try to make it look like the previous ones, so minimize training for your employees. Okay. Uh, it tells us provides a view of the storyboard. Views only display themselves. React they can serve as containers. Um, preview your interface. To preview your interface, uh, check everything is looking the way you expected. Um, click the assistant button in the Xcode toolbar. There it is. Uh, two little circles in the upper right hand corner. And I got too many windows. Okay, you can use the, uh, that's one of the next steps is the using the navigator toggle and the utility toggle. <laughs> I don't think there's any way I can have everything on there. Oh well. At the top right, they have those three little window things. Right. Yeah, this right here, um, like you say, uh, turns off your, your three items. Or turns them on. So if you click those, you'll see more, less. You don't necessarily want this over here open all the time, do you? So that's especially one you want closed. 
This is real useful to have open. This one I probably would recommend leaving open when you're designing because this allows you to very quickly choose between your different things you've added on. Um, when, when do you think this is useful to have? This here. When you're designing or when you're looking at attributes? Okay. Um, see, so you know, switch the assistant editor from automatic to preview. Go away, Zoom. I forget what I was doing. And it appears at top of the system editor. Uh, switch the system from automatic to preview. System editor is on the bottom. All editors stacked horizontally. All editors stacked vertically. Hmm. Okay. Let's save that. Um, there it is, save. And um, if I, um, um, my save. Oh, oh it's under, um, file. Do you find it? You just did it. Apparently. I think it's stopped there. It should be under file. I think it's stopped here. It is under file. Oh, it's here. already saved it. Change, move something now, um, if you run it, we created our second app, which is a little bit more meaningful, right? See over here in the simulator, it comes up. If you click in the blank, notice the keyboard pops up. What does this uh, button say in the bottom right hand corner? It says done, doesn't it? Remember how we changed that to say done? Now I'm going to click the done. How come it won't let me click the done? We didn't program. Remember that checkbox we did? Like you said, there's nothing in the box, is there? We did that checkbox. It said, hey, they have to input something. So you have to put in something first. Huh, boy, that's loud. You get that in there? Duh. Yeah, I want duh. Um, and then I click done, and now it's enabled. That's what that checkbox does. Really? Um, I'm gonna run it. So you click that, and then uh, just do stop. But I'll stop here only, and it'll take a minute for the simulator. I mean, I can use that one. Click it there. Before, but it won't. The drive's going to be fine. Go back next code. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I got it. Um, yep. Cool. Interesting. Keyboard doesn't show up either. 
Option probably isn't set to um, three. Well, no, it's uh, set by default for MP4. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that. I don't know the answer why we wouldn't bring up the keyboard. Can I just do the simulator sometimes? It doesn't bring up the keyboard because it's not using Oh, it doesn't? No. Well, maybe the simulator is a little flaky. It might now go ahead and I got the DC here. Take turns. Have... Save it to your flash drive. I saw it. Not that we have done a whole lot, we could recreate it really fast next time, but uh, if you want to plug that in and save your flash, I we're out of time. Oh. And I'll go ahead and... Oh, it's, it's, pretty, it's easy to recreate next time. It won't take very long. <laughs> And I'll stop the Zoom meeting. How do I save it to the flash? Stop recording.